next speaker for today is Peter Bajaya from the National Imaging Facility, or NIF. Peter is NIF's Senior Manager for National Data Coordination. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, Kerry. It's great to be here. Can you have the next slide, please? So National Imaging Facility is Australia's advanced imaging network. We provide open access to flagship imaging equipment, expertise, tools, data and analysis on a national scale. We address Australia's strategic science and research priorities for the benefit of Australian industry, but also very importantly, to keep Australians healthy. A major focus of NIF is health and medical research, uh, but we also have considerable and growing in infrastructure and expertise supporting many other types of research. We're funded by NCRIS and state governments, and we, uh, and we work with our partners uh, uh, 14 partners. Next slide, please. So Australia's advanced imaging network is truly national. Uh, we're deployed in five states. We have 14 partners uh, doing very with uh, varying facilities uh, across Australia, small animal uh, imaging facilities, uh, large animal research, uh, radiochemistry facilities, preclinical and clinical imaging facilities, uh, and our partners work in brain research, um, uh, cancer research, whole body research. We've got over 100 instruments implemented nationally, many best of breed. And very importantly, we have 60 imaging experts deployed at our facilities who are helping researchers every day. Next slide, please. So from a data infrastructure across our NIF network, we have challenges and opportunities. Um, Increasingly, multi-site data-centric projects are driving our requirements, and those projects themselves are becoming more complex, um, especially in participant data management. Um, some of the dimensions are multi multimodal scans, longitudinal studies, uh, diverse data sources, and highly analytical, often and more increasingly with uh, that are AI enabled, and with external and international collaborators. So, and looking at NIF's data infrastructure right now, it requires uplift. It's functional, but it's lacking scale. It's heterogeneous, it's siloed, it has limited support for integrating uh, and linking data. And often uh, our solutions for research community are project specific. And this is in the backdrop of increasing cyber breaches uh, internationally. So from the opportunities front, and there are a lot, NIF's uniquely positioned to create impactful data sets through our data partnerships. And that's a strategic focus for us. And there's an opportunity to create a single touch point service for our research community. There's opportunity for a step change to participant data management through technology integration. And uh, there's a great opportunity to leverage NCRIS standards, for example, through the ARDC best practice and capability, and an opportunity for identifying overlapping technologies that are implemented across other NRIs. Next slide, please. So the, let's talk about the tr uh, Trust and Identity partner, part, Pathfinder project and why is NIF involved, wants to be involved. We, we think it's quite compelling. It provides harmonization and a central approach to user access management and puts access control back with the research data custodians. It simplifies user access management in complex decentralized multi-site research environments, which, which we have in spades uh, at, at, at NIF. Uh, it enables access for industry and external stakeholders, provides researchers with greater choice about who to trust and when to trust them, it's supportive of ethics uh, approval applications and provides greater certainty when building technology integration solutions, as we've just talked about with Steve. So in terms of the NIF and AAF partnership, um, AAF authentication has been reliable and a great service for many years. It's very trusted. Um, this is an experiment and uh, we know that and this incubator project won't get this done fully done in terms of uh, trust and identity implementation. So we think an ongoing partnership with AAF is very important um, for long-term success and hopefully with increasing numbers of NRIs as well. In terms of our incubator project status, uh, our scope and objectives, we're still setting them. Uh, we're in that early phase uh, and our timelines are fluid, though we would like to deliver something this financial year. 
And I'd just like to share with you our current thinking about um, uh, what, uh, what we intend to do. So thank you, Nick. So two pieces of software, um, REDCap and XNAT are highly relevant uh, to our research community and also uh, to NIF. Um, these are open source uh, pieces of software, been around for many years, are trusted. REDCap is a more general uh, software platform for uh, storing participant uh, data, cl clinical data, um, surveys, uh, managing participant IDs. XNAT is more specifically in the imaging informatics and data sharing uh, space with uh, highly technical and functional imaging capability. Uh, and these uh, these softwares are deployed at NIF partners and at our uh, client research organizations. Uh, they're great, they're highly relevant, but they're not integrated. So next slide, please. AIS Shields and is an MRFF critical research infrastructure project led by Dr. Ryan Sullivan at AIS out of the University of Sydney. NIF's a partner of AIS and a co-investor in AIS, AIS Shields. And AIS Shields aims to provide researchers that consolidated view of participant data via REDCap and XNAT integrations, quite a number of integrations, one of which includes an integration with Flyer Platform's uh, Galaxy Workflow engine for genomics analysis, which is really quite exciting. So if, if we needed to make a problem statement for our incubator, user access management still remains siloed. And the proposed inc incubator at the moment is that we could augment XNAT and REDCap with trust and identity framework incorporated into AIS Shields. Next slide, please. So just to give you a contextual idea uh, of how this would work, current state is a, uh, a researcher who's using REDCap uh, might have a thumbnail image of a scan, uh, but to actually access the image in detail, they would need to go and log into XNAT, find uh, uh, the participant, uh, find the project, uh, and the target state for this could be that that very same user in REDCap uh, could possibly push a button and uh, launch XNAT um, in context of that project participant and session with the access control uh, set up. Next slide, please. So in terms of adoption and scalability, if this incubator is successful, um, we, we, we think there's a lot of opportunity here. And NIFs are probably most initially interested in the first of those, where we could deploy central instances of REDCap and XNAT um, uh, with the framework and AIS Shields enabled, um, but there are many other possibilities. Next step could be that our NIF partners could utilize the, the, the framework on their institutional instances of REDCap and XNAP. And then further to that, institutions, research institutions, our clients could enable the TNI framework in their Red, REDCap and integrate with the NIF central AIS XNAP because we're the image experts. And then it goes on from there. There's many opportunities. Not, um, and the last one is actually quite important where REDCap or XNAT could be replaced with other technology stacks um, throughout our NRIs. Next slide, please. So um, I just wanna uh, give you a bit of a case study, uh, the point of care MRI uh, project. This project is uh, running today. It's a multi-site research project led, by, led out of Monash University. Um, if, the te if the technology, the framework technology was available now, this would be a great candidate for using it. NIF has supplied low field, portable, uh, novel uh, scanners, uh, hyperfine swoop, um, perhaps uh, the first in the world, to four NIF nodes uh, to help researchers learn how to apply this technology for patients in acute care uh, situations needing immediate assessment and also in uh, rural uh, areas for conditions such as stroke, traumatic brain injury, and other neurological conditions. So this project um, really does fit the bill. Um, it's large scale, it's multi-institutional site, multi-site uh, scanning, uh, participant identity management and naming conventions need harmonization, federated imaging data, vendor participation, uh, there's a, a development AI of AI and machine learning informatics pipelines um, and uh, a near real-time delivery required of scan data uh, from the portable scanners to the PACS environment. Uh, 
for assessment. Next slide, please. So in summary, um, the, we believe that the trust and identity frame, framework is highly relevant to, network, uh, to the NIF network, but all, we believe also to our client research community. And we've identified two software tools for an immediate trial. Um, there are numerous deployment scenarios which can aid and uplift adoption over time. This, we believe there's scope for collaboration between NRIs to produce shared data integrations, but we are only at the beginning of the trust and identity uh, frank, uh, journey. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. It was great to hear from you on the opportunities that trust and identity offers for NIF.